Better than clockwork, isn't it? Wow, so persistent in crickets. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricket Tude Busting Episode BTW RLM 410. Hopefully in the future when you are searching out for BTW broadcasts, you'll put those numbers in and hopefully something will pop up. Maybe not. Donation month. We're getting near the end. Thank you for all the folks that have been donating. I just got word we have a very generous donation. Thank you very much. My dog Rex again. Appreciate all the support getting us to keep going on. I'm just uh, thinking here. I'm <laughs> always getting these, uh, these thoughts. I really am appreciative of everybody that's supporting what we're doing and uh, helping to remove at least some of the financial constructs and trying to work out how we're going to continue to get out as the censorship, this thing that's this governance in the world is coming on us. If you, again, if you, for RLM, find a place you can donate in any kind of way. There's all kinds of digital, there's Patreon. I don't know if it's Patreon or not. Anyway, you go look on the website, reallibertymedia.com. A lot of the bills get paid, then we don't have to worry about it. We do it once a month, and then we can keep going and, and trying to bring at least from my my perspective, bring people the information hopefully beforehand and getting giving people time to think about what they're going to do and then get them hopefully practiced in, in doing it. They're doing what? Well, responding to this crime against us in, in so many ways and so many levels. And so, anyway, I don't even, I, I wonder what, what, we're, what we're doing as a society. I look around and I don't want to see, I don't want to see what I'm seeing, but the society isn't too functional. It doesn't understand how to respond. We've had plenty of opportunities that we just don't want to pick up on. And I don't know what that means. Ultimately, it doesn't look good, but I also know that all it takes is, uh, well, all the donators to this web website, this uh, Real Liberty Media that allow me to get my voice out, I would hope to allow people to hear what's coming. And some of you will take advantage. What is it? Many will be called, only few will pick it up. And then I'm asking you to do it quickly because you're going to find out how little you understand to, when you pick it up, what to do with it. And it's coming today. I'm going to talk a little bit about extending from yet last week. It's not, I told you it was going to be harder and harder to avoid this thing. And, uh, we're, I'm getting more indication of that last week off the broadcast. It's more coming home to roost, if you will. I had more people talking to me about interposition, oppression of mask impositions of people and what to do about it. So I finally settled down and did a little bit more checking and I found out some things that I think people need to know, although they're relative to a state. This again is finding out what the battlefield says to you that you have to respond and I don't it's not so easy it's not so straightforward and I so I anyway, I'm going to put together some things hopefully so that you can see what what the potential problem is and before I forget remember we had a new broadcast at, with uh, Gary Ellen Gigi's boo I thought I heard Gigi's boo's voice in there just the beginning of last week I'm not so I'm not sure but Gary Ellen did his top 10 countdown uh, we'll have to hear what he has to say this time it's a top town countdown of what's happened in the past a bit of nostalgia to bring you maybe present to the future in a way. What did we used to think? What did we used to, how did we have, what, what perceptions did we used to have that appear to be completely lost to us? And so uh, welcome them back to the network and hopefully that continues and we get more people that, and any of you, one of you, that because of, because of the no donations that are coming in this, this year, there's, there's, you know, it's like the, the weight is lifted tip, typically other than technical difficulties that the server bills and all this, ca- the server streaming costs have all been covered. And there's a place for those of you that have content. And Grimner is more than willing to help set you up and make it work. And it doesn't take a little, it takes a little bit, but not much, just to pay attention. And you too can be bringing your content to people. And so uh, the other thing I'm going to say, I did not post to Twitter. Anybody who is listening but didn't see my posts, I I didn't post to Twitter. Last night was about, about impossible for me and Twitter. And it's about on the end. And so I've been looking at something else. It's an old technology I've been talking about, RSS feed. I'm not quite sure mostly about it. You would get a feed reader. I was asking Grimner about whether or not, or if you will, the promotion that the broadcast is on its way for you in any day uh, is up. And he says that that's not quite quite how that, you know, it's not, it has to post as a, as a page from the website. So I'm not sure how efficient RSS will be, but 
I'm looking at some RSS feeds to get the content that looks like Twitter to me, except for the pictures. And maybe we move back to uh, get become become Luddite enough to get back into technology that's not censorable, that we can connect up to those that we want to communicate with and at least see what's being produced. And uh, so we might, I'm looking to do somehow, maybe run into that. I'm going to be probably picking up RSS instead of doing the Twitter at all, as it's become just too too much. And, and to tell you, the, I mean, to, if you all look at my my uh, Twitter feed, there's no very few people that follow, and very very, I mean, just a scant number, one or two or three that it responds. So it's really not a time I can get hundreds of people elsewhere. And so it's the writing's on, been on the wall about that. I've just been trying to explain, you know, here I am, come and look. And uh, it's just not panning out the amount of time that I'm spending on all that. So anybody's got some e- good ideas, please uh, mark on the beast at protonmail.com. And maybe we can, uh, you have some some of you sending me information, sending me things. And we're t- I'm trying to work through those as I have time, uh, which hasn't been too much in the last three or four weeks on this other, doing this, this court case that's become very, uh, taxing on the time, very uh, demanding because of the the type of corruption you're going to meet when you try to defend yourself is uh, immense, and that's why I'm asking you get involved now so you can start get a get a sense of what that is because there's ways that you can you can work and then you can work together, and I think that's partly what's going to happen. The community, if you will, that we saw in Virginia come together is going to have to come together for the very survival. And speaking of survival, this storm that hit the with the, this COVID lockdown. I think Mother Nature said, hold my beer with Texas. And uh, crude prices soar as U.S. oil gas industry faces major disruptions due to the Arctic blast. So you think you think governmental lockdowns are, are good. Look at what Mother Nature can do at a, at a time and a corollary. I find these things fascinating with uh, COVID is the a new climate change. And uh, we can then see global warming now come to our rescue to show us what Mother Nature's power, real power, is to just take out anything the mind of man might have in, in, in a, as while we, we trust the officials to look forward. The crude oil prices soar. This caused a, a bunch of problems. We're going to see this is a, a microcosm of what green, the new green deal, the sustainable development, what green power is going to do. If you consider alternative sources of energy, and I'm not against them, but n- not to the capacity that we need as a society, global society, even the local society and the national uh, national society, the type of power that we need, electrical power, can't really be repl- replicated in a Green New Deal type of thing. And you're seeing in a microcosm when the what happens to you over time incrementally with sustainable development, the Green New Deal, and all this green stuff, is you're seeing an outage. You're seeing an incremental outage that you never really understand, and the prices go skyrocket, and the supply goes down. And I've never, it never made sense to me. And that's what the first clue was when you speak in the Green New Deal and you're only focused on, forget the carbon problem, just that you want to reduce your, your carbon consum, your, excuse me, your petroleum consumption. Why would you take out a water, a dam, hydropower? Why would you take that out? So the fraud was, is a present. And it, the fraud, as I've said, comes in, it's all from the same governance modeling. You'll notice in these crude oil prices, it has to do with this Wall Street condition, this fictional system that's set up, this uh, lack of protection to the actual infrastructure for your benefit. And you see when Mother Nature speaks, how unprepared people are. To me, this looked more like if you stretch this over time and called it climate change, the effects of climate change in policy, you're looking at what is going to happen over time. An anomalous cold snap disrupted well well operations across the central United States, prompting total U.S. oil production to contract by approximately 40%, with crude output dropping by more than $4 million a day nationwide. Uh, So that supposedly raises the price in the the store costs. But remember now, Biden just took out the projects of two pipelines and maybe three, and, and the anticipation of others for your supply that you need. And so the price, they're making the policies that are going to drive up the prices due to an artificial, if you will, an artificial restriction on, on the, the, the sourcing of it. And it's all, actually, I look at this as a, really an attack on your, on your national security as well. 
when the highest office in the land is agreeable with it. As I've been telling you, this is showing us those officials aren't really there for us anymore, haven't been. I explained to you the January 6th pledging of allegiance to mob rule was not keeping the republic by those officials. And we could expect to see more rolling, tightening up, as I told you back in 20, 2019 to 2020, what was going to be bringing, brought on and moved worst through and into what we, from what was started in 9-11. So that, that little, that little cold snap, and it, I've understood that that is just a reoccurring thing over maybe a couple hundred years. A hundred years or so, it reoccurs. This is a normal variation. We can't even attribute it to the joke of it not being climate change, because this is just the climate. This is just what happens on this earth, and uh, I think we need to understand that. And uh, while we, they want to claim global warming is going to kill us, this is what really happens. And last week, I was uh, sent a, a document, uh, a study that was done, and we're going to—I'll touch about that, which was I found interesting. Look for the things that's not spoken about in things, and you'll see some of the truth. But after a day, one more story about Texas and what happens, and this microcosm we see happening in a weekend, what I think Green New Deal proposals to get rid of carbon fuels, to get rid of petroleum, and, and even took out a nuclear plant because man didn't have the insight to keep his cooling pumps running, which is, again, you just look forward to mismanagement, maladministration, and it's rife everywhere, and we, as a an obeyant society just lets and puts up with it. Now, people died over this, so this is, again, the expectation. You, you'll do less, you'll have less, and they expect more, and it's all just to survive. But after days of massive outages, some Texas residents now face huge, huge, huge electric bills. Now, to me, and this is a serious thing, but these people elected on this, and the company was, interestingly, telling people, do not use us as a supplier. They saw this coming. Millions of Texas residents suffered last week when a winter storm caused a statewide electrical grid failure. But those who had power, even intermittently, are also paying a price. Literally. Many residents face enormous bills for the electricity they use during the storm. Residents with variable rate power plans, variable rate power plans, are being hit the hardest. Such plans charge different prices for electricity depending on how much demand there is. The more demand, the higher the price. Variable rate plans are enticing to people because the price of electricity is often low during the normal weather conditions and because it theoretically allows people to use more electricity when the price is lower, for example, by running appliances overnight. I hope you can hear the implied sustainable development plan right in here. We've been talking about through what? what they use smart meters for. And I have to say, I, I didn't read further, but this is probably attached to smart meter use. And so we're looking at what happens when they create an artificial structure for the control of your energy. A bit of going on here, but when the winter storm caused uh, Texas grid to all but shut down last week, the wholesale price of electricity skyrocketed. One of the most popular wholesale plans in the state is offered by the company Giddy. Gritty, excuse me. Gritty. As the storm moved in, the company took extra the extraordinary step of urging its customers to switch to a different electricity provider. That's pretty cool in a way, but they're telling us something. But it was too late because many residents can't get the switching done too quickly. It takes days to get that switching on. And so they were then subject to this bill, one of the examples of which was somebody only using an air fryer, apparently. And this is another thing I always found interesting in these stories. You will not be able to afford the, cook, afford the cooking oil you need. And you won't be using lots of it because you're going to be eating vegetation. So the, the cooking oil, this air fryer seemed to be important in what they're telegraphing. 60 degree weather in the room, didn't watch, do hardly any TV, didn't do any electricity, didn't do much of anything to spend electricity except for their air fryer. And their bill, as they claimed through, I guess, the Twitter, was $5,000 for 1,700 kilowatts. And so, shocking as it is, they did elect to do that plan. They probably didn't think this was happening. But to me, if you look at the key points, the clues, this is what they do, they'll do in the future with smart meters. And they will force you into this austere life where you're, as we heard before, it's already happening. 
You're washing your clothes in the middle of the night, in the morning, at 2 and 3 in the morning. You're not living normal anymore. You're not turning your thermostat up. You're subject to these changes by the moment relative to this demand, this artificial demand. And so to me, this was an indicative of what Mother Nature did holding her beer to show us what a real lockdown is, what a real one is, that we can't do anything about. And I look back and say, well, the one that was government instituted was not so bad then, and we didn't do anything about that. That's, that's all on us as well. But this is indicative of the future as they move in technocratic measures to control your life and control what you do. As, as I've, I've said, you'll live austere, and everything you spend will be just to keep your life going. In other words, you'll be that the company store slave. You'll be supplied by the company store, which in this case will be public-private partnerships through the color of a government that's doing some favor to you. And in fact, they're not. In this case, Gritty was trying to tell its customers, be, beware, here it comes. And they couldn't get people out of the way and fast enough. So that's kind of neat. But uh, beware here, folks. This is what green technology is about. This is what the Green, the green Deal is. This is the, the same thing that we hear Greta promising is a shortage of power. And your life goes into austerity, and it's very expensive. And I was interested in one little story I read. It was showing Texas is instrumenting is interesting in a, in a way that their power grid structure apparently is mostly separate, if not completely separate, from the rest of the grid, which is divided in between east and west, I think. And so, don't mess with Texas. We're we're autonomous. Very well may be in their power. But that, that highlighted in this, in this thing always highlights the weakest link, which happens to be the bureaucracy. And so, again, we're walking into an interesting future, and, but I think it's indicative of your future, the, literally the future of your little ones coming, that they will be used to or be made to be to this new, they call it the new normal, this new thing, unprecedented. And there's no reason for it, except that we allow it. So moving into this, cold snap, which is really fascinating. I was, Mother Nature is just awesome, isn't it? Shows how, how fickle man is. But last the week before, I was sent by an emailer a story uh, that was found in quantification of temperature and precipitation changes in northern China during the 5,000-year Chinese history, the quote 5,000-year, close quote, Chinese history. And it, uh, the highlights of this were the quantitative temperature and rainfall records provide a new climate background for the entire 5,000-year Chinese history. Point two, the temperature and precipitation reconstruction reveal incomplete coupled changes between 1,000 cal year, calendar year BP. Climate fluctuations influenced Chinese historical cultural changes. Okay, interesting. I didn't see climate change in there at all. They're talking about climate, the weather, how that works. It affects cultural, uh, it affects cultures which would be understandable. But more importantly, as I read through this, and I won't read it too much more, we talked about temperature, rapid cooling after superimposed cold snaps. What I want to just move hit and move on from here, they have an interesting discussion that though they were speaking only, what was missing was you'd never see here that the the culture was changed by global warming, it was only global cooling and snap cooling. And we see evidence, the mic, the weekend, if you, the week of that proof sitting in Texas, what the earth does normally over 5,000 years. And it's not global warming that causes the problem. It's the global cooling. And so I found this interesting more beyond what I think the emailer was sending on just seeing this. And relative to what's happening. But this, based on what happened in Texas, I found this very interesting. I noticed after I saw that, that there's no, no, there's no speaking to when the, when the climate warmed, that there was a problem that charred, that changed cultural uh, norms, if you will. And so, just an intro, to me, it was an interesting thing. These, they tell you in this, when the cold hits, people move. There's nomad, nomadic migration. And again, you'll just survive. And so they're twisting onto us. This false narrative of a global warming, which apparently hasn't any history, didn't suffer by. The cultural history has never suffered by. And they make great waves of about it today, when in fact, as I was told in the, in the 70s, or if that was true, but seems to be that we would be going into a cooling phase because of the way the cycle of the sun would be working. Oh, there's a sun. That's another problem, but 
oh, there's a sun, and it would be the energy of it would be going down, whatever, however that works, the interaction, I'm not going to get all through that, and that would bring on us a delayed cooling time, and then we, again, we go through these cycles where, depending on how deep that is or other factors, the cosmic ray inter energy, the magnetic fields dropping, their shields dropping, that interaction, all that stuff starts to play into the climate of the planet, not because of some man-made political idea. That cold is what causes cultural change. Nothing in this report that heat did so. Warming. Certainly not by two. You notice that there was two to three, I didn't read it, but two to three degrees centigrade change over the top of four degree rapid coolings is something way more than the degree and a half warming they're worried about over a century. And so we put this stuff in perspective and we start seeing these lunatics that are promoting these ideas, these political ideas like COVID-19 and climate change and any number of other things are detrimental to people. Well, I don't know, and I don't care what society you live in. It's a global problem. But everyone has a stake in this one. Not the one you eat. Not the one you drive in the heart of the vampire, although we may need some of that too. Now, this is a, an interesting report after I kind of read this through with the Texas. It's not, there's no heat here. There's no warming. It was cold that caused trouble. And I think everybody can kind of just, you don't have to be a, a genius to figure that out. Cold is a difficult thing. Some of you act tolerate way more than I would. But anyway, moving on here. More, more fraud relative to pointing out the wrong direction to go, wrong direction to protect yourself against global warming. So all of a sudden, oh, in Texas, we don't get too much cold down here, so they don't, they don't winterize a nuclear power plant? They don't even run enough heat out of that nuclear power plant to keep the pumps warm? Well, we never see that. Well, apparently they do, and they have in 100 years, so, or 120 years, whatever it's been. So we're not even far ahead of thinking to see that maybe Mother Nature is pretty tough and she can show us what a real lockdown is and maybe we should have protected against that. And so this, this is what your officials do. They're so far, so intelligent. They're the, the, the cream of the intelligent intellectual crop, aren't they? I know, but some of you spilled on your coffee, spit in your coffee, didn't you? That's the point. But we really, if we're looking at reality here, at survival. Now, Mother Nature's survival. Politics is a different thing. Mother Nature came to lock you down. Some of you died. Some of you are really, really bad off. And so we have a, maybe a, a reckoning happening, I would hope, in, our, in us, in us, relative to our societies, local or even larger. And the frauds that are brought on us and the frauds we accept, I think we need to start marking down. And we can't, all of, any one of us can't address them all, but all of us can address all of them. We just have to settle down, I think, and, and choose to do that continuing on the frauds, and continuing on the thing I told you was going to happen, and it did this in the change. The demarcation point I'm, I'm saying here was at Hindsight 2020, Operation Hindsight 2020. We would be these continuing frauds that were started in 9-11, and there's others, and there's historically others. Point, I've pointed out lots, and I've pointed out that our ideas are not what reality seems to be when you go back and go look in the documents that are our only objective basis. Why cancer culture wants to take it from you? All the Print, printed records, they need to alter them or destroy them. Because if you don't have that as a background, you have no, no foundation. And that's how these people work. Unless you can find a foundation. And you run there very, very, very quickly. And I say very, 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 and that might not be enough, fast enough. You must stand on your a foundation. The only one we actually have is something written. Otherwise, it becomes the Mandalay effect. It becomes the Mandala effect, which is also a joke. You think the Internet is something stable and set. We put value into that. It's not. It can be changed. Any coder on the back end of the back of the back side of that can change whatever you read. Anyway, uh, so speaking of frauds and, and perpetuation of the 9-11, we see right in the news, Pelosi 9-11 type commission to give more powers to U.S. domestic spying apparatus. So, again, this is, I'm not the only one that, that was stating this. I told you, though, that it was come, it was here. It was going to flick like a switch. The imposition of this, and they waited for a guy who was really their obstacle a bit, not totally, but a bit in Trump to get the new guy in who was waiting to push the, just put the thing, the engine that was idling in gear again. And October fifth, on the fifteenth of February, 
House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced plans to form a 9-11 type commission to probe the Capitol protests. The Dems' real aim is to give more power to the United States, to U.S. spy agencies, expand homeland security and anti-terrorism measures, and use them against American right-wingers, a U.S. observer says, as reported here. And so I'll just stop there. I don't need to keep talking about these idiots. Uh, this is any excuse they'll use against you. This is now not conspiracy theory. It's not some dumb guy behind which I don't know what he's talking about. This is now in, in play and quickly, as I said, and under color of something they also used against people, not responding correctly. And this becomes a little bit of a insight for me because I've been noticing this over decades, that people in mass seem to go the wrong direction. They're going the good ideas. In fact, we had a little discussion. Our mining district did meet for the first time in a year, actually, we found out. And a uh, group of guys, you know, these guys, I don't understand. Not one, of them, not one of these miners in the mining district meeting had a mask on. It's just incorrigible. And so we had our meeting. It went off well. I appreciate everyone showing up. Anybody listening, thank you for, do, for showing up. And uh, we were talking a little bit about some of these things. Because part of the function of the district is protect ourselves, uh, protect producers, essentially, from what we've been watching as the encroachment happens to take away our production as a society. The basics for the basis for how we exist is in our production. And so I focused in on some of that. And um, that's the thing I do uh, for what I can. So we, we were meeting about these things. And inside that meeting, we were talking about people who are trying to do do things. And an example came up, which I had to say we need to investigate because it's again people who think they're doing the right thing in fact when you look very carefully and it doesn't take too long either you find that there's basic fundamental flaws in how people think they know better than than the occupier the power to do what they're supposed to do and yet when you look very carefully not only are they not doing more correctly to more and i would say proper ways to do things as i've been telling you if you're going to make a revolution if you're going to make a rev the revolution to stop something, you just don't start with the revolution. And, our, and I told you the, de the Declaration of Independence is the first step in that process that you necessarily need to look at history. Why? The people that I think were a lot more aware and, in, and more intelligent than we might be today, notwithstanding our connection to the world, in fact, despite it, I think gave us things that we have to follow so that we do it more correctly. And I'll tell you, when you start doing it that way, your mind reorients itself into a better thought pattern, I think, as well. But we're looking at people who are doing things in the world, trying to right wrongs, and uh, the criticism I had of this one individual was, well, it all sounds great. It's all, you know, you want to stand up and salute the effort, but the actual application has, there's problems with the basis for the application. It's something I try to tell you not to, don't get into that, because you become the fodder eventually. You become the example of how not to do stuff that, tells people that it's not able to be done. I don't advocate any jeopardy. There's ways. If you're going to get into a point of jeopardy, then you probably went too fast. And that's, so you went, you missed something. So here it is, the, no, the news, the notice, is the news to us, they are in fact moving on with 9-11 and getting to a more constrained uh, surveillance system uh, nationally, could care less about the people, Everyone's an enemy. You're all an enemy combatant. That was declared in the P-A-T-R-I-O-T Act. Oh, and as I said that, um, Montreal asked if I would go through that act and go through the types of words that are used and the acronyms and things. And uh, I thought about it, but I don't know if I want to go back to that act. Anybody who understands, has listened to me, should be able to go through there and see how like the pa the word patriot made up of the letters p a t r o t act is not what it is it's really they make it up it's the difference you can almost see the military connection on how militaries do do their missions they're they're made the same way uh, and so i don't i think i'm going to decline to try and go through the patriot act again through wordage and i think we need to look forward to what they're doing to us right now and as i was talking to some people i think i was saying it at the mining district we can't get people to do the organic remedy that was in the establishment called the habeas corpus. We can't, we don't, I don't find evidence that people readily understand that at all and can't execute one for themselves. We're in a serious way in this country that rediscussing what's going on in the Patriot Act is not going to help us when it's, it's transformed itself into COVID-19 in a different type of a way. It, it ends up being the same 
condition by what they ex- they purport to be a valid reason. And so I've been totally against that agreeing to that for us. And and then the problem becomes a dysfunctional society, not understanding the basics. So we the like the habeas corpus seemed to me to be the most important singular fundamental thing that each one of us needs to know because that's that's our private that's our if you will the line in the in the sand if i call it sand that's our foundation against an unwarranted restraint of liberty and that was written hardwired into the system that is slowly being changed and ignored and anyway so here we have it i don't know what to say more i was telling you this is just the 2020 was going to be the movement through to bring on the condition that would be utilized and now we go to 2021 and they use the January 6th event, whatever you want to understand about that. And the people were let to have them be used that way. They didn't get behind the woodshed to listen to what I told them, which would have been, look, not, it wouldn't have looked the same on the onslaught. They would have walked in nice and calm. They would have walked in like they were invited by the cops, but you would have went in for a different reason and you would have sat there with your grievances and you would have sat there until they resolved those grievances and you would have uh, did a peaceful protest, if you will, with your grievances, the interposition that you needed in mass. Now, it wouldn't have been in mass relative to the population of the United States, so it's not that mass, but relative to that building and what they have to do, it certainly would have been a mass. And so we start to do things that are much more appropriate, is what I'm hoping we get to do. There's, that isn't going to be the answer. It's to get us remo- refocused on what we really need to start to do unless we want to live like the people in Texas in a slightly different way. I mean, you'll never recognize that. Is the future people coming? They'll never recognize that. They'll never recognize the, the Texas storm they're living through every day. From Pelosi and the whole thing about the six, we get this story, which I find interesting. I'm not going to put much time into it, but I keep tabs of these things. I'm wondering where this story went, really. A judge releases Dominion audit, system designed to create systemic fraud. A Michigan judge has released a bombshell report on the audit of Dominion voting systems, revealing that machines and their software were designed to create systemic fraud. The report covers a forensic audit of the Dominion's machines in Michigan's Atrin, Antrim County, which received national attention after it was discovered that 6,000 votes for, the President, for President Donald Trump were flipped to Democrat John Biden due to an error. I'll well, stop right there. Point is that there's this ongoing thing going on about these voting systems, which is a whole other problem. How can, anybody can get into voting. The very, I mean, the machines look identical to what I identified in 1993 of a problem. Obviously, they have different types of systems of the memory in them, but they're the same in that they the memory can be changed and they can connect to the internet. Now, the question on that was they don't. I think the subtlety was. That they not that they can't connect, but they wouldn't connect during the election, which is irrelevant prior and after. Point is that these things are designed; these voting machines are designed for fraud. And so, how anybody in this country can move on forward now that we've seen that relative to voting, I, I don't know how. And that's why I said fo- my focus is, is what we do, our deeds, not not in agree, continuing to agree to fraud. But so from the fraud of Pelosi and the fraud of the reason why they're going to put more surveillance on you for a different reason, now actually more sec- national security related uh, than it is COVID. But it, nonetheless, more surveillance. This brings up the tracking because everybody's an enemy combatant. And anything you do that goes against the, that they need to be against national security, you become a target. So they say right wingers. Eventually, everyone becomes a right winger compared to their left leaning, left going corruption. And so don't underestimate, they may not come for you today, but doesn't mean they're not coming for you tomorrow. But we have now a, a, a report where where Trump is on all this and all, and all these other folks, uh, the crack, and I don't, I don't know. It, it really wasn't that interesting. I was telling you I was going to wait to see if anything happened. But here, now a judge comes out and says the audit shows the machines, uh, it shows that they can, they can, they're fraud. They can create fraud. To me, that speaks to me in 1993 to 5, when I looked at those machines and they had a little bit different technology. I said ultraviolet lamps and EPROMs and a connection to the to a phone line, which is a baud rate of, you know, 900, whatever it was. Uh, they were still able to be programmed then. 
this is, if you will, vindication for me. I wasn't, I wasn't just making stuff up when we were denied the ability to look further into it, into the problem and the, and the coding and all that stuff. So this has been a long-term thing, not just this election, not just Dominion. Die bold. Remember, we were talking about that. Die bold. The country was going to die boldly in its defiance to stand up against this tyranny. And moving in through that tyranny and the technocratic way they're doing it, the the technology they're using to get around all this. And again, the judge came finally, well after the time. I don't know where where Trump is, but I don't know if 6,000 votes meant meant anything. It sure telegraphs a problem through the system, though. And I'm going to tell you that those machines really don't look different than what I found in 1993, which means every election that we were denied to look at from then until now had at least a color, a taint on it that people don't, are completely unaware of. And so there we go. Now we got the balance of we're not paying attention as a society, and we give every reason to not pay attention. That I think the things like climate change or the governance instead of government is rolling onto us so ever slowly. It's not so slowly, actually, but the totality of looking at something like Texas, your life in Texas, has expanded through po- political policies across the world is going to come a lot slower. But to me, I see every every mark, every monument that point out and clue to point out this is exactly what we're looking at. It's the political disaster, the natural disaster, political, it's a man-made disaster. These political things like COVID and climate change, any of, the, any of these others, I don't even, they're on and on. But the technocratic problem, it kind of speaks here coming in, uh, what you can expect in your future. And uh, again, a lot of us would say, you know, say there, we've made references uh, to the, you know, w- the thing about w- when, I, when they came for the Jews, we didn't, I didn't say anything. When they came for the Catholics, I didn't say anything. When I, this, that, and the other, I didn't say anything. When they came for me, there was no one to hear me in my call. Uh, we find this an interesting dichotomy of how this is actually working and who the player really is in the future uh, in a little place called Israel as we see this COVID political attack against us and the unending endlessness of it and the ability for the, the government to use a prerogative police power that's presumed, not proven, uh, is how they're going through, as I suggested. And uh, through this title here, we just came through as Israel reopens relative to this COVID, as Israel re- reopens, whoever does not get vaccinated will be left behind. And what's interesting is they call this, this is like the yellow star, I mean, green, green badge program. The green badge system, which didn't seem much different than a yellow star system, is what they're going to put on as a both a carrot and a stick that the government issues, making leisure activities accessible only to people who are fully vaccinated or recovered starting Sunday. And that sounds identical to the stuff the CDC is talking about in your international travel. Coming out of is- little Israel, of all places, if you didn't think that there's a connection, and, and I don't, don't underestimate what I've been telling you about the technological advances that Israel has been allowed to make put in the system that's adopted by every other country. The green badge is interestingly consistent with the green religion and the green life future and consistent with the austerity that if you don't do what you're told, you will not have. You will have no leisure. You will have nothing that they consider to be leisure. You'll have nothing that they consider not to be essential. You hear those words, folks. Under a new green badge system, the system acts as a carrot and a stick. Is that is that the definition of a free people? That the government can have a carrot and a stick that way? Is our future right here. We're looking at it. And you, which means you have to have the technology. You have to have a phone. You have to understand the technology. You're subject to it. We have a little discussion in the chat earlier about the digital currencies and stuff. You know, part of me says they're cool because it's just a medium of exchange. Everybody agrees that's fine. But we're looking at a systemic governance-connected control. They let the, bit, the Bitcoin run. I was asking, well, what's causing the BitChute to move on? Because 
what, you know, it's just what, what? It's just some electrons in a wallet. Who cares? I get the idea, but fifty something thousand dollars a co- an electron packet. And uh, one of the answers was the Fed corporate industrialists versus another answer was just the in, the industry industrialists. So your Bitcoin, as I said, to me, I mean, I'm just looking at this. Your Bitcoin is already an industrial, a corporate controlled medium, which ultimately I've said is going to be funneled and controlled. The pump and dump will be to focus you into a government authorized thing. So neither here nor there at some level, but this is the digitization of your ability to do things at a very expensive rate. It went corporate to only the industrial players. The man on the street has nothing here. Oh, you're going to get your, as I said in the in the chat room, everyone blows up about fractional reserve banking, but no one can, seems to complain about having a value of in their Bitcoin of point zero, or a relative value in their wallet of point zero 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 one. And I don't, that's amusing to me at some level, but it has a serious problem attached to it. This is it. The green badge system. This is no different than the sesame in China. I told you that was China was the, what was, we were going to watch roll out. And here it is now in a little place of Israel, which is not a, not, it, it, it makes sense to me because that's the next, the technological hub for implementing all of this. And so it's in the news, folks. Your future is in the news right here. As I said, the notice to you is in the news. What are you going to do about this? Not that, what are you going to do about Israel? What are you going to do with the technology, the rules, the standards that they're talking about in this story are already in the United States. They're already in Kanukistan. They're already in the UK. They're in U- the EU. They're everywhere. They're in Australia. They're in every crown colony. They're everywhere. The China started. They're there too. And so don't disregard, you may, we in the United States may be but seemingly less affected. The infrastructure, capacity building, these are all words of sustainable development that's being built into this world right now, is now if, becoming and using to be, be a carrot and a stick. You don't do what you're told, you'll be without. And they're making systems to be able to enforce that. And so please consider this is not an easy answer either. And, and so we have a bit of a work to consider, uh, I think, uh, about how this is going to work. How fast this rolls out for everywhere else, I don't know. But you're seeing it there. It's not that it's an imagination. You will, you will, they, and, the, and the problem is, they, again, the carrot and the stick, that's not just that you will, it's an insidious thing. They're, they're implying that you have a choice there. And then what's your choice? And this is the duality that happens. This is not just double speak. This is a technique. That they provide you two alternatives, neither of which. This is like voting. Neither of which. The, the choice of two evils, if you will, is not free people. And that's not free people in the world. And so let's blow out all the borders this way by saying all people should have these, these rights that we believe are the beacon of the United States of America was made to to foster, encourage, and protect, and secure to each people, each one of the people. Okay, I know it's a joke, but actually they are there if we're gonna, if we would just assert them a little bit more properly. And I, I've told you on how a couple things are, it won't get lost, but the duality of this is insidious. And yeah, I saw it, you know, I'll give you, now let's move in to this, having more questions this week, attaches to last week's conversation, about looking more closely about how you respond to these more, but the carrot and the stick is like this mask. And if you don't put a mask on, the, that's that's the, the, the carrot. The stick is if you don't, you're going to be attacked. Worse to us is the official support for that and how we can look in and, and see the double speak, the carrot and the stick, and that they, the system may not really mean what it says, but that I tell you if you see that, that may be their Achilles heel if you go a few more steps. And in this case, I want to explain, because a lot of people are saying, I have a medical a medical, in, a medical, disability, and I can't wear a mask. Well, again, I told you that uh, the, pioneer, the pioneer police state is Oregon. And I think I've identified again how it is. You can't just say that. And I've been telling you, like, don't use HIPAA if you're, not, you're talking to a non-medical profet, uh, facility. 
it doesn't apply. If you go read those laws, instead of talking about them, instead of doing the idea you know better, you better go read about this stuff. Okay, it might work a couple times, but as the, uh, the parasitic amoeba figures you out, it starts taking all those things away. I told you this a long time ago, how I learned from it. Looking in the law, there was avoidances in the law. I'd write paperwork, I'd use it, I'd hand it to people to work. They'd write it, they'd put it in. Within two years, the legislature closed that hole. I did it if we find another one. I'd do another paperwork, I'd hand it to people. We'd have people, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, getting, let's say, traffic tickets written off. Two years later, they'd fix the why two years because it's a they would probably do it faster but that government was what bi, biennial government they only come together every two years and so every two years they would plug another hole and i said wait a minute i'm training them to 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 plug all the how the the the, the escape routes to our prison this was years and years ago folks it's not just last week it started to form how i come here to talk to you and what we'd have to do and what happens to happen so we have an additional problem. The, the parasitic amoeba will look to, to work around everything, you, any obstacle you put up. And you can't use those enough that you cause it to understand how it's going to be able to make a resistance. And that caused me to start looking at things like, well, how do you understand, undermine a presumed prerogative power, which is what I talk to you about now. It's only presumed. Presumptions are rebutted. How do you do that? The only way I know to do that at the level of a prerogative presumption Allowing police power is to identify, if you go to the equity, quickly as fraud. And I've now, so I use that, and I go in and I say, where's the fraud? And I found that out pretty quickly last year, and I started to tell you folks about it. Only I told you that one of the remedies, the easier remedies, was to be in the habeas. Okay, so I've been explaining the basics. Now, why the habeas? Because it's an organic, established, black and white authority that they have to provide to you. And if everyone who's been looking, you'll see it says, you shall allow this. And there's only like three exceptions, and a lot of that's fraud. If you do fraud on your application to petition, then they're not going to allow. Or if you're in some condition, like it ends up being contracted with the state to be incarcerated, and you didn't follow the process after you got that agreement, then you can't. But straight up, where they don't have a commitment order, because they never got the first report with your name on it, and they're locking you down? As feeble as that is compared to Mother Nature, they're locking you down and you unrestrained on your liberty? That's the vehicle that they can't take away from you. That's the the grant, if you will, in law. It's not a grant, but it was a reservation to the people. When I say grant, is that's what I started to pick that up through grant law. Grant disposal soil law. And there's nothing the government can do when you look at how that worked that they can intrude forever. All dis land disposals are off limits. Now everyone wants to argue because they know better that they have a right to drive, when in fact it's the right to use of the disposal. Anyway, so here we have the duality. If you go and use the wrong words and terminology, it's not a guarantee if you use the right ones because of the corruption, but that's a different way to, there's a different ability to, to approach that. That's direct obstruction and violation. It works to treason really fastly. It's making war on your laws and your way of life. So if anybody abandons your laws, you have nothing to complain about now. Anyway, moving to this. The duality of the term, the problem of give, the stick and the carrot ability is just, an, I, I can't even get beyond that somehow. That, that's even spoken of. And then you see it replicated in the United States. is very interesting. Well, looking at the Oregon rules, because I've had a lot of people talking to me they put in a new new order that it's statewide now. Again, I don't know anything about it. I don't get, <laughs> it's not quite affecting me. Wherever I've been, it hasn't been something, but I've told you it's, it's coming harder and harder to avoid. That uh, I was looking, I said, okay, I better go look and see how is Oregon doing it. And everybody has to go look at your state. This is very important. But it was very difficult. And this is another way they do it. They obscure the information. How you go about finding information. I ended up finding, and I had to go, wait, I guess backwards, it ended up being, through a lot of things, links you're not going to get. It's still a lot more you will, but uh, you have to go and pay attention as you read them. I'm going to highlight some things on some links. We're placards that the government will pass out to people. 
This first one, I had to go backwards through the placards to get back to some of the authority as I had to look in the words and identify in the words where the source might be. And we had a little bit of a condition in the email uh, with a condition, how to find your law. How do you understand where it is and how to track it back? And when you start to come to a point when you think you're coming to a dead end or it's a vicious circle or you've lost the, you've kind of lost the trail, then you probably went down the wrong pathway. And that's a lesson that you have to know and learn. You have to identify that. I do that all the time. I did it on this project. I was finding dead ends. But I'm learning how, when you start to see the dead end, admit to the... You can't give in because it might have an answer. In the initial, you have to prove it out. But when you start realizing you're kind of chasing your tail, as one of the examples was, you give in to the fact that maybe you are. Maybe you missed something. And so this is one of those projects for me. It happens. It happens a lot because they really seemingly hide this stuff. I didn't know what order we were talking about. I didn't know what people were talking about. I had to make this stuff up, kind of go at it. And so I find this little placard that says, Masks, face coverings, face shields are required. And I want you to listen. I'm not going to hit all the points. When you get these things in these placards, you're going to find out where they say, uh, face shields are required. They say, don't use face shields. Or only use them in a very specific thing. And then you start seeing, you almost can't figure these people out, which is another part of the trick. And so if you get lost in what they're saying and not get to the core, like a laser shot, you will be driven by the nose to the water hole that they want you to drink from, and you'll either drink or you'll drown. And that's the way they want it. And let me show you something right in here that starts to be very problematic. Everyone five years of age or older is required to wear a mask, face covering, or face shield at this location. This is a sign a business or a place will put on their windows or whatever, in display. There are no exemptions, but individuals can request an accommodation to enable full and equal access to services, transportation, and facilities open to the public. Children between two and five years of age are strongly encouraged to wear a mask, face covering, or face shield. Now, let me go back. Did you hear some hesitation, even though it's mandatory? And did you hear an incongruity relative to your full and equal access and why would that exception be there as well is how i re- started when i read that path i go wow there's a lot of problems here here's what i'm looking for i know maybe some of you that i just read that didn't hear that but that's what i heard when i read it there are no exemptions is not congruent with you can request accommodation the problem is they don't tell you where and how and what authority i already know what it is you too too probably we'll just get that cleared up it's the federal ada the Federal Adult Disabilities Act. Accommodation. So, I want to point out, you can request an accommodation. Is not you declaring that you have a medical condition in this state. Even though you can request. Now, my point of the other incongruity, did you pick it up? You can request the accommodation. Even though there's no exemptions, you can request an accommodation. So apparently accommodating you is not an exemption. But that's in order to enable you to have full and equal access to these facilities. Let's put it general. How is that congruent? If equal access is those people that have are given the carrot to have a mask can walk right in without accommodation, how is it equal access that I have to request accommodation? In other words, you have no power to say I have a medical disability. You now are required, as I told you, to work with a third party to negotiate your disability to have your equal access. There's a facial violation of the ADA in my mind. And if you don't read that, I hope you go read it to read that. This starts to become the minefield that they've placed before people who may resort to the ADA. If not, just say it's a fraud and you can't regulate healthy people. They don't want to listen to that one yet either. But anyway, again, you have to have a commitment order. That requires a report and a study. Without those, anybody who's telling you that they are is really defaming you and asserting fraud and felony against you. In other words, they, if you looked into the last the last broadcast and went to John Jay, I think, Singleton, I think his name was, he'll tell you you got to make a record. You'll hear that. He's speaking right to making that record. That you're trespassed against before you trespass against the facility. 
But I want to point out this week, you, you can't just walk in necessarily. you got to go look at your state. In this state, you can't do it. You can request an accommodation. You just can't make the declaration. Now, through this briar patch and minefield, we can get right directly back to that. But you have to know all this stuff in order to know that it's not straightforward that you can actually have full and equal access. And so right in this public notice, is a, it's fraud. It's essentially a fraud. It would be a violation of the ADA because you don't have equal access like everyone else. In fact, they are discriminating against you for your claim of disability, which is none of anybody's business anyway, actually. And so you got to go look really deeply about this, how this is, and you have to highlight in black, black and white, copy and paste the black and white into a, a summary document for yourself, your traveling papers. In this state, you can request accommodation. Facially, in my mind, a violation. You're treated different now because of a disability. And the exemption apparently doesn't apply, but it's, it is an exemption because now they've the exemptions that don't exist. None of the exemptions exist for anyone now have imposed itself upon you by not allowing you the equal access to those that they've given the carrot or have accepted the carrot. You bunny rabbits. You, you little goats. Anyway. So right up in this notice, it's very important to see if you can't make sense, if stop making sense, then there's likely something that you're a fertile ground to go work through. And so I'm focusing on those points. I'm looking at that and saying, well, one of the answers is I'm being prejudiced to have to go ask for accommodation. And so the, when you get down to the accommodation, it ends up being except for other exceptions why you can't just demand they have other exceptions in the ADA. We'll get to that link. You can see those as well. They're printed. This is not even any anything you have to read deeply into. The accommodations are subject to exceptions as well, which means there's the minefield. You have to miss all those before you can claim. But once I think you understand those and you list those, you just assert that none of these issues that are exceptions can apply, and ultimately the most reasonable equal access that they need to accommodate is that you get to go do shopping and leave and they can keep your distance from you. Why? Because they're all wearing all the carrot munchers are, are wearing masks. That's the, that's the short answer for you all but you can't just go there because you're going to have to be able to negotiate that with the business in the states that are operating this way. You are given, and this is where this, this little handout says, to request an accommodation. This is, again, a poster on a door, on a wall, on a door somewhere. To request an accommodation, you can contact this business or location at the following number. Doesn't sound like equal access to me on its face, but that's the requirement. Okay? So, that's the first point. I wanted you got to read this. Don't read fast. Read slow. Look for and qualify. Everything you're looking at, there takes a little bit more thought. I told you. I know everyone doesn't want to do this. I don't want to do this, but I told you there was a day we were going to have to do it, and I'm seeing it here in the Pioneer Police State regulation in the state of Oregon. And that all happened again, I think, because this order just came down, and now the whole state's been locked down. Notwithstanding, I'm not even talking to fraud yet. I'm just talking, just giving them their due. They are not consistent. And you have to know this path through the minefield. Then they present this other document, face covering facts. Now, face coverings, we know, anybody who studies, is not the answer. But all they talk about is in this is droplets and cause and sneeze. And, oh, do you know if you talk and you laugh and you sing, you can be infected? Well, this is the problem. Understand what they're not talking about here. They always speak to this hypothetical infected one. And you're going to, I'll show you here in a, in a bit, the CDC even makes exceptions. They say in their Travel plans, everybody has to have a virus test until you go look at their page, and they says not everybody does. And they preface it on the infected one. And there's two types of potential infected ones. And if you, you lay those out, you understand what you say to state that you're not either one of those either. This is a minefield that they've laid. It's not so straight as saying I have a disability when you're facing some uh, irate carrot muncher. Somebody thinking they're saving the world against COVID. 
this thing talks about all these interesting little the carbon dioxide doesn't doesn't build up using mass and they give references to farm workers and custodial staff and hospital employees i didn't understand how this can speak to anyone in particular and this is what it's about the infected one in particular a someone that has is infected that can it's not up to a public agency to determine, even though they have a public document that every business is supposed to present. Must is not shall, you'll find out. Oh, you should follow this, but you don't have to. And there's a whole lots of other, uh, I can't even go through all the things. You start reading little words here and there that show there's lots of hesitations, and they're not, we'll get to another documentation. It says, to the extent. Well, what is that? They don't say. Well, what is that? To the extent. Well, there are extents, and it doesn't go everywhere. And yet they say you must, and everyone believes that's a shall. And so, going through these, I know it's tedious, but you look and you see what they're willing to, how they're willing to lie, shows you the subject matter you're going to possibly need to know, not as an argument, as some factual backup that you bring in secondarily. Remember, this is a secondary mitigation that you're sitting on the problem of the fraud that brings this into being. But the most important point for you locally in every state is that to say or assume or even presume you to be, well, they can't presume or assume, actually. The law is they need a medical report with your name on it that you are suspected of being someone. And now they've added the expansion that's almost unlimited. But you could be considered to have been near by someone. And if you look very carefully, that is actually on your determination. So let me show you, if you stay ignorant of those around you, which I don't say do that, because if there's a real flu, you don't want to catch that nasty little bug. You don't want the common cold. Why, why be miserable when you don't have to be? Get your nutrition up. Do what you need to do to stay healthy. But what this ends up showing you is if you're ignorant of that, you may actually be another, I don't know. I don't know of anybody that did that. No one. In fact, no one, I can say it myself, honestly, no one around me has been affected by this, has no symptoms. I don't have symptoms. There's no other symptoms around me. And that has to be one of the statements that you lay down when you see what it is. Not because I'm saying so, because you see, you have seen it written down that that is one of the things in the list of things you need to say. And you know why and in context. Moving to another document. And they go through and they talk about uh, what the statewide times, uh, uh, the statewide mandate is unless... Oh, so there are exemptions, first of all, on certain things. I won't go through the list. You can pick the link up and go read it. It's inane type things, so it's not really relevant. The point is there are exemptions. So this starts to show, to me, where was the study that allowed that that was even possible? Then we get before that. See, we've got to go backwards slowly. How did you determine how this infection, infection is and what it was about when you don't have the isolate, you don't have the test? You're fraudulently using a technique instead of an actual test. You called it gold standard. That's a fraud. You get to start saying all these things, but you're not going to do this on the street with a business owner. You have to stay strictly with these these things, and, they're, and the business owner, you have to understand, is up against these documents they've been told that they believe. And they believe it, and they have to believe it, otherwise they do not get to do business. So this is they agree to munch the carrot. But if you read through this next thing, you see, they say there's no exemptions. Well, you can ask for an accommodation, which is not an exemption. And I guess this is not an exemption either. If you have a medical condition that makes it hard to breathe or a disability that prevents you from wearing a mask, there's two points there. Hard to breathe or disability to wear the mask. Now, you can request an accommodation from the business or venue or transit authority. It is apparently not that exemption. Because it's an accommodation. So you're learning the language is specific here. And it's not just that you have a disability. It's that it's hard to breathe. And so you have to have this document in your traveling papers. Then they say here, the Oregon Health Authority, and if you look at their authority, they don't have much authority except for to tell people and do some enforcements over the infected one, if you look very carefully. This was never supposed to be implemented like they have been. And until people get that, until people start to assert that for themselves, it's going to be difficult. A lot of that stuff, though, comes second to the documentation you see relative to what the state's giving businesses and what they're believing, and they're scared to death to not. They don't want to not eat that carrot. They're going to munch that carrot. 
The OHA does not recommend wearing a plastic face shield alone. While face shields can be a very good at blocking droplets, they are not as good at stopping aerosols that go around the face shield. Now, I'm going to stop here. I don't know if anybody's seen. Uh, there's no fitted masks I know about. I don't care which ones they do. You're going to exhale around the side of the mask. You are creating actually more aerosols, and I've done those studies. I've read those studies to you here. Uh, this is all in preparation for you if you go back and have collected it up. And so they are taking away your face shield. So that means that there's no shield, apparently, against this. And they talk about aerosols, which are the, the mask actually makes an aerosol. So there's no consistency with this, and there's actually no studies when you get right down to it. But you're not going to go to a third-party business and argue this stuff. You should just stay to the narrow path of within the minefield to be able to pass through it. And so you would bring up, well, I have, you, you're, going to, you're going to have to figure out a way you can do it. I think there, make the accommodation when you assert the ADA, you assert a couple of these points, you show them in black and white. Then you say, so the easy thing is to just back away six feet and you wear the mask and I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Thank you very much. Uh, but I have a breathing disability. You bring this out because this state says just a breathing disability is enough. You don't have to have a full-blown ADA disability. But it's interesting. You go to the ADA, there's some interesting disabilities you can now have. In fact, we've actually argued in, in opposition to a due process breach. The very fact of communication through the mask was a disability invoked by these policies. They've created us to have disabilities, as I've told you before. So I have another link here from the Office of Governor. Again, you use you have to start with their you have to start with their um, uh, their documentation is all I can say. That's their orders. They're presumed to be right. We're not in a court. We're not in a position where a court's going to follow through with this and, and, and really even listen to fraud. And it may be that we're maybe out of that time. I told you fraud was allowed when the money was allowing it back in 2008. And so I don't know yet. The, the verdict is yet out on, on this point. It doesn't mean that none of you keep, that all of a sudden you stop asserting it. You have to assert it. A statewide reopening guidance, a mask, face coverings and face shields again. Now this is where I finally came to and I found, again, this was not on a government website directly. It was on something called shared system subdomain through the United States, uh, through the uh, Oregon state, through the United States uh, domain. And so, the, the dot us domain so this is not even information i could get directly but it did state the authority i'm looking for and it, in this case i now know where the executive order is and i have to go read that and this is eventually being it's four four or five pages of just six pages of just nonsense they don't have any real regulation what they do and this is where it started to come backwards was better they dump it off to the oregon osha which is in, is your businesses uh, to the environmental uh, the Oregon, it's like the federal surrogate uh, to the to the federal government's OSHA on top of their health organization. So we see now statutes and an executive order. Then they give me a link to the OSHA rules instead of this guidance, which prevail in workplaces, which they combine you as a customer into those. And so you have to understand how they're, they're messing this thing around. They're not clear on this stuff. They've divided up who the authorities are. And you really should track back on whether that's all lawful and to what extent. That helps to support your foundation. But this shows, I'm telling you, this is showing you, you shouldn't, shouldn't be going on that you think you can declare just by your declaration of a disability that they're going to listen. And, you, and this is a, to a third-party business owner. They don't want to listen because they're afraid of not being able to munch the carrot, which is doing their business. This is the carrot and the stick. This says right up front, it's going through OSHA. The OHA, the health authority, is gone. Now we're going to go through this relative to these list of things that it doesn't pertain to child care, K-12 schools, areas of workplaces, licensed health facilities, health offices, shelters. and how did, It doesn't apply to health offices, folks. <laughs> shelters and transitional, where there's nobody sick there, apparently. Adult jails and correctional facilities, youth detention correction, private residences. Any other sector that has more specific guidance issued by the Oregon Health Authority? Oh, there's others there. And this is where the CDC starts to pop up. And they'll say anything the state has that's more stringent than what the CDC is, it, it, it trumps what the CDC does. And so you see that these are also suggestions. They're guidances. But people believe they're, the, they're a stick, and so they'll munch the carrot. And so I will... Anyway, so 
when you look through this stuff, I know it's tedious. I know no one wants to do it. But if you want to continue down the road and uh, want to get yourself in trouble, then disregard what I'm saying. If you want to start learning how to be a lot slicker, you're going to be able to understand what you're available, what's available to you, and you'll have it organized in your mind before you get there on refined ways of approaching this. There's a, now a negotiation to execute your equal access in this state. And I, as a pioneer police state, if this is not in every state, it, I believe it will soon be in every state. Well, so I go down to the enforcement section. Enforcement, to the extent this guidance requires compliance with certain provisions, it is enforceable as specified in Executive Order 2066, pay, paragraph 10. Well, I found two of those provisions, those two of those hesitations, two of those limitations fascinating. And you'll never see them explain to what the extent is. You have to divine that, essentially. Or of what certain provisions that are not applicable generally. And so here's another problem. If you start to see how to read this, you start to bring up that there's no disclosure on uh, how the extent of the guidance or that it's certain provisions that they are putting on you are actually applicable. And now you flip the burden to them go show how what they're trying to do to you, which is to net, to require the negotiation to be that's beyond equal access, to cause the negotiation causes the violation to equal access, to be something that the enforcement could actually work against. We, we'll find out it can't. I mean, you'll find out eventually when you finally get your head wrapped around all this nonsense that it can't. And so this is the, what I want to, I'm showing you. If you look very carefully, they can't, there's no exemptions. You can't get out of it. And then they show, oh, but it doesn't pertain here and it doesn't pertain there. Health offices, well, you think that that would pertain. you got a bunch of sick people. But it, no, see, there's, it makes no sense is the other point. And then these provisions are guidances that certain ones are, require compliance unnamed over certain provisions. And so you start putting this in your mind on how this works. And here in this section where they talk about the Center for Disease Control has issued an order. And they talk about face shields, that it prohibits the use on transportation. You'll find out through this thing they recite to CFR 70, that's strictly transportation. And you've got to go three or four levels deeper than that to find out it's strictly commercial transportation. And so now we start to see the limits. And yet they require you to go that deep in order to be equal access that you had prior to this nonsense. As I told you they would do and cause you to do, that if you didn't understand this, you be, you become one of those that will be coming into jeopardy, or you'll become someone who has, to, who has to decide, do you take the stick or do you munch the carrot? And they're coming into places that, I'm not going to judge that, because they're going to take away your necessities. They're already doing it now, and no one's really running uh, trying to stop it. But this this lack of engagement all this time has engaged, allowed them to get this to the point. Uh, they also offer that if you're wearing a microphone and you need to, uh, uh, when possible, use technology that can help maintain a low risk of virus transmission. Does anybody hear a problem with that? That last word? How can you declare what a trans virus transmission when you don't have a virus and you don't even know how it transmits? You don't even, that, that, that brings up the susceptibility. Transmission to whom? That presumes that you are infected one without a medical report saying so. So that line right there has a bunch of problems. But they want you to use technology. Why? Well, because technocracy says technology can answer every question. So now you see the worsening of the problem instead of just let, letting you walk around as nature uh, would allow us uh, to communicate when they're, uh, especially in face of the fraud. But anyway, they offer, you can uh, make a, amplify your voice. Why is that going to come up? If I get there, I've been getting there three weeks in a row now. If I get there, they're already working on your mask problem, and they're going to call you. i got to say it if I don't get there. They're, they're saying that if you think you can't communicate through a mask, then you have a mental problem. And guess what? Now you all have mental problems, and that's actionable for them. Well, until you look closer, it might actually be actionable for you under the ADA now. But... Are you using equal access to have to give up your medical history to anybody who's not your doctor? No. So we have another violation, latent, not spoken to, that you have to pull out for yourself. You have only the rights you assert. And the only way I know to assert the rights, you take their black and white and you say, but this is counter to a right I have, and you don't have the first jurisdiction developed through the compliance with your state law for such, which is what I keep talking to you about, what I have talked to you about, 
Well, those of you that are doing the habeas or looking it down to find the standard and go send your letter, that's all I'm talking about. Same stuff over and over. I'm seeing through here in a place that says, you can't just say you have a disability. And they will not recognize that you're requiring you to divulge your medical history to a third party who has no, no, no interest in that at all, actually, is not a violation to equal access. It's something I'm telling you as you hope get your mind together on how you're going to have to start to think and express yourself. And I think going through the minefield is very quick once you understand the minds and where they're at. You'll be able to map that. And you'll be able to get to the point pretty quickly by you asserting the points that they understand that they might be able to use an exception, show how they don't exist, they aren't relevant, and that they still have to accommodate the point. Uh, the, the ultimate thing that you're going to have is that they presume you to be a, d a general danger, which is pretty fascinating. They're setting up the rules to presume you to be the general danger. And so the answer, part of that answer is, or do they have a report that said that you were an infected party? Because you ain't seen it, first of all. And so, I don't know, where, I don't want to put too many words in people's mouth. You have to get the the order of how this thing works. It's not something you can walk in and Say HIPAA, disability, medical condition. You can't, in this, these states, you can't just say that. You have to understand the condition because they've built exceptions to the exceptions and they've made it a negotiation. And so they go through and they talk about all kinds of things here. Let me just get on through. They talked about the executive order. I, it was, oh, 15 pages. Boy, did I miss that. 15 pages of executive order, on and on and on and on. Not one time will you actually find the truth in it. Not one time will you find any direction. She's dumped, this is Governor Brown over there in Oregon, she's dumped everything onto an agency. And you know, if you look very carefully, you'll see that their administrative procedures work on this, which is fascinating to me, because underneath the administrative procedures, there's a bunch of savings clauses against your fundamental rights, if you know what you're looking for. And so what I'm telling you is if you understand better, you proceed better. You proceed without argument. You proceed line item, line item by line item, what it is you have available in the states that are starting to amp up and to constrain how you are working. They can't over violate, uh, overstep the law. And you're seeing, you'll see how, if you look and read through this, you start to see where they stop short at every point. They know that. So, what are you, 15 pages of executive order, shutting the whole state down, making no exemptions, and yet you see all this hesitation in, in the authority. But is the, it becomes the, the minefield, the exceptions to the exceptions. And you, you have to, you have to pay, I don't know what to say, you have to pay attention. People don't tell me what to do. You're going to have to pay attention to this. It's the, it's the only pathway that they've allowed. Because when you don't, see, they'll call the cops. As you heard last week, they call the cops, and now it becomes a trespass on you, and you didn't make a record that showed it was a personal, if you will, per, a private trespass against you when they were a facility open to the public. It's a whole lot more than a trespass, but this is the first start. If you don't understand how, that, how to come to that, you won't, you won't necessarily under, really understand what I'm saying at all, but you won't maybe appreciate why I'm, I've been taking all this time to explain this. Based on, let me go into the CDC now, or the uh, reference to the ADA and what they're saying there in a document I found. Based upon CDC guidance, a business or government agency may require customers to wear a face mask to limit the spread of COVID-19. So they're given the government's license, these third-party businesses' license to may require. There's your hesitation. That's like must, not shall. May. May what? Must what? Subject to a better authority. Again, you have to know what that is. You have to know your rights. You have to know your, the limitations. That doesn't get it from your mind and your opinion. It comes to what the black and white will acknowledge. And that also helps us that we don't get in an argument. And so this is talking in the East Coast stuff, but it's one I came up with. And it talks to the, it talks to the business owners, if you will, asking questions like the Reagan will ask you, ask a, we'll, we'll ask a question and tell you the answer. Is, is there a reason for a person might not be able to wear a face mask? CDC states the person who has trouble breathing is, in, is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance should not wear a face mask or 
cloth covering. So there's your trouble breathing that's reflected in the state side placard. Examples of a person with a disability who might not be able to wear a face mask. Individuals with asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, or other respiratory disabilities may not be able to wear a mask because of difficulty in or impaired breathing. People with respiratory disabilities should consult their own, should consult their own medical professional for the advice about using face masks. There's no direction there for the business to go do it or to be able to do it. Going on, the CDC also states, and I say by what authority, over me locally, to my health, presuming me to not be healthy, Wow, interesting. What authority you have here, CDC? Also states that anyone who has trouble breathing should not wear a face mask. Well, I think nature says that. I think natural thought says that. You have trouble breathing, you're going to take everything out of your, out of your, uh, in front of your face. In fact, the Heimlich maneuver was made up in order to get rid of obstructive uh, trouble breathing, wasn't it? Okay, so the, now we, now the CDC becomes the wise old owl on, on, on what you do to breathe. At any rate, keep going because this is interesting. You, in the first, the first point, if I was to make up some stuff without knowing, I would have been two or three of those things I could assert. And it's nobody's authority where the doctor, the doctor should go to the professional for advice. Okay, it doesn't talk about when you don't have one. And so, okay, I should, but I don't need to. So, who makes that determination? Number one. Point number two: people with post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, severe anxiety, or claustrophobia, an abnormal fear of being in enclosed or narrow spaces, may feel afraid or terrified when wearing a face mask. These individuals may not be able to stay calm or function when wearing a face mask. was a very good instruction to some of you who would like to pull that off. Anyway, second point is your mental health. Now, why are we required to expose to somebody a mental potential, mental instability, a mental harm to anybody to negotiate our equal access for accommodating us is my first observation here. But it allows us for that mental claim. We can make a claim that we're mentally incapacitated. They go on people with autism who are sensitive to the touch and texture. Well, I don't know. I've met some people that were not autistic that are sensitive to touch and texture. Covering the nose and mouth with a fabric can cause sensory overload, feelings of panic, or extreme anxiety. Why do you have to have autism? So you hear the list of what you need. I would object that I have to say anything. But when you get to the that you're going to have to say something, I take it as a harm. And the deprivation of equal access to have to divulge it before I get the care. And then I might state it. It depends. I might actually take it as a harm and then go the route of uh, John Jay if I didn't if it wasn't life-threatening, I could go somewhere else. I might actually take it as a harm to bring this forward. And this is how you have to plan what you're going to do. And this is not an argument. This is something you understand. You put the presumption, you put the preference up ahead. You say, I don't, you know, this is a violation of my rights and my health. My doctor is supposed to know. Are you my doctor? Uh, but in any regard, how is it equal access? How do you have the power to negotiate the knowledge of my health condition? And the other party won't have that, and so then you off you don't you don't hold them in the in the in the clutches of a problem. You give them the answer. I said so because of this is, looks like a violation of the ADA. I'm offering a, a suggestion. How about if you wear the mask, I can go. I'll go quickly through the store so that I don't have to be uh, infringed on my breathing or whatever the disability might be that you just say disability, mental condition, and and you keep people six feet away. Just I'll just avoid people by six feet. You go ahead and agree to them because this is not a fight you can do with them. You just want to do your thing. We have another addition for people. That, and I like to read this stuff because sometimes if you don't have the problem, you don't think about it. A person who uses a mouth control device such as a SIP or a puff uh, to operate a wheelchair or assertive technology uses their mouth or tongue to use a, assistive uh, ventilators uh, will, will be unable to wear masks. Uh, they also talk about if you have like oxygen that interferes, you can't have masks. So there's lots of exemptions, actually. But this is another thing I didn't think about too much. But, yeah, there's people that are, they have to make exemptions because the world isn't so perfect. 
and yet these technocrats think they can make it perfect. And so you're watching the, the failure of this whole thing to start with, even if there was a cause. If a person with a disability is unable to wear a mask, do I have to allow them in my business and government? Here was the ADA landmine. This is not talked about. And so this is showing that they're telling the government, the, the businesses, the third party, that there would be exceptions when you get to read through this. And I won't read it. They go through the, the rationale behind it. And uh, the ADA, I'll go down, the ADA does, ADA does not have rules that address the required use of face masks by state and local governments or private owners. And so this falls short where the government, the federal government gives the authority to the state, which it has to because that's where the health is. And so you've got to be careful on this landmine, but you have to speak through it through the disability, which can include, and agreed to by the state, an impaired breathing. And they talk about one exception is reasonable modifications to a face mask, even though they say you can't have an exhaust valve to breathe out. <laughs> Fascinating. And somehow the opening of a hole makes more aerosols than the closing and breathing through a fiber, which creates more aerosol. I, it never makes any sense to this stuff. So they have a list here, reasonable modifications to the face mask. Now we're back in the negotiation. And this is the problem with the landmine that you have to kind of look through and rationalize how you would qualify there is not a modification that can be made where this is not a practice given the face mask doesn't actually do anything that's pretty well out the out the out of the realm notwithstanding it might cause claustrophobia notwithstanding it's clear at any rate up to whoever's looking at this examples of reasonable modifications are given so that's one exception a fundamental alteration this is typically talking about facility structural changes. We don't necessarily have to uh, do this. So you can eliminate, likely, the other exception a business has to fundamental alteration. They don't have to change anything other than to just let you go do the shopping or whatever, to interact and, and get out. And then they have another one, an undue burden. A state or local government agency or a private business is not required to take any action that it can, it can demonstrate. There's the burden shift would result in undue financial or administrative burden. You just speak. It's this result, this answer that you stay six feet away and let me get through here quickly will not cause an undue burden. You don't have to define it. It's already defined in the law. But you need to say it. In other words, you get rid of this exception against you that they can hold up if they think that they're going to demonstrate the undue financial hardship to you. Now, maybe that may come obscure Maybe the, I don't know, maybe insurance liability. I don't know, but I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to come up with this too quick once you start to identify that these are the ADA requirements and they are not, they are not relevant to what you're doing. And so the last one I think it is here is the most important and serious one. When everybody's an enemy combatant, when enemy, everybody's a threat because you're asymptomatic, when you're pre-symptomatic, all this nonsense. You can be deemed the direct threat exception that they don't have to allow access. So we'll read that. A state and local government agency or private business may not have to provide a reasonable modification to the face mask policy if the individuals with a disability pose a direct threat to the health or safety of others. A direct threat is a significant risk to the health or safety of others that cannot be eliminated by a modification of policy, practice, procedures, or by provision of auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary aids or services. The determination that a person poses a direct threat to the health or safety of others may not be based on generalizations or stereotypes about the effects of a particular disability. It must be based on the individual assessment that considers the particular activity and the actual abilities and disabilities of the individual. During a pandemic, state local and uh, state and local government agencies and businesses should use the most up-to-date information from the CDC, uh, the U.S. Department of Labor, Occupation and Safety, and Health Administration, that's the federal OSHA, and the state public health agencies. These are all the authorities you have to understand as at play that may provide some kind of guidance, actually in words you can use, or they will try to assert certain things that you'll have to know about in the minefield before before just saying I have a medical condition may attach. Because the pandemic threat 
to the health and safety will vary by region, you should consult your local public health agency for guidance. Let me get to the point of that, and I don't have to read. I don't want to read so much more. This is back to the local official determining that you, the infected, is an infected person. This gets me where I thought when I read that to eliminate your direct threat, you would have to say, "Do you have a medical report from the local official that I'm an infected person?" And I think, can't don't don't run on this on its own. If you understand the rest of this, and you got this in your mind on how this works, and you get down to the one that they have the most power to decide, that you present them with the local health authority's lack, or they don't have the right, they have the burden to demonstrate, and they don't have that, a report that's been put out that you are the infected one, then they don't have the ability to call you a direct threat, and now you're back to the fact you may not be a threat at all. And so the best thing for everybody is, Let's go ahead and you wear your mask, and this gets us to the direct answer, once you've discussed this with the accommodation negotiation right of the business. Let's get to the most, the easiest thing that puts no undue hardship on anybody. is isn't a direct t threat to anybody. I'll go and do my shopping, you all keep your mask on, keep your distance, and I'll be out of here quick. Let's not fight. But you've had to bring your papers to show that you have the authority to get there, and more importantly than you, than what you know, is showing the property owner who's been scared to death and doesn't want to not munch that carrot, that they can go ahead and munch that carrot too. Have your, have your cake too. You can even eat that carrot. They get theirs, you get yours. All right? So you have to go through this discussion. I know you all know I don't. Well, yeah, you can go your way. Everybody can go their way. That's right. What I'm offering you is a way that you don't get yourself in trouble, and you offer a possibility to be actually an educator. Because you're going to have to talk with these people in these states where you have a, to negotiate your equal access in violation of the equal access of everybody else it gets. <laughs> what a stupidity. You're going to have to negotiate that. You might as well do something while you're there, I think. I think. You can sound off. You can you can be tough. You, you can be not be tough. You can uh, just... Do what you can and get in and out and get your way that way. Yeah, that happens a lot. I guess what I'm saying is I think we need to prepare ourselves for a different type of battle and communication because this is not going away. The CDC order that they referred to says this order shall be interpreted to implemented in a manner to achieve the following objectives. First one, preserving a human life. What threat do they have that it's other, when they're, you're threatened and the, other than your life that's being threatened? We'll go through that list. There's a whole list of these things that this is the objective. Not what it's going to do, but the objective. The applicability. The order shall not apply within any state, locality, territory, or area under the jurisdiction of a tribe that requires a person to wear a mask on a conveyance, requires a person to wear a mask on transportation hubs, or requires a conveyance to transport any persons wearing a mask. Get to the short of it. Any of these states who do have these, this order, CDC, that the state relies upon doesn't exist in that state. What you do rely upon is what they just said prior, was look at the local authorities and the determination that the guidances stay. Well, when you get to the law and the applicable CFR, it says to the infected person, which is exactly what your state law says is supposed to be determined. What I've been telling you since last March, you're going to qualify with your letter. So your letter should be involved. I don't have a record. Do you have a record? I don't have a record that I'm an infected person. On top of it all, to be this, I'm not even a threat. I'm not a direct threat. And I have evidence by their statement that I'm not a direct threat. Do you have evidence? It says here you have the power, the burden of demonstration. Do you have any evidence that I'm missing? And the problem is, is we got to get into antagonism, and we, we'll readily do it. We have the people, the Nazis, the, the mass Nazis, that jump all over you. you got to find some third party when that happens. Possibly, like uh, what John Jay says, find the facility manager, the one who's responsible for the risk management of that facility. Hopefully it's not the same one the same party. And if it is, you, you just buckle down and you bring out your folder. Yes, I don't like, like that we have to do this. Yes, my equal access is already violated. However, this is what they said our, uh, us up against each other with. Now, we get to the CDC, and they refer in that CDC order relative to travel and this transportation and the mask use and no face masks and uh, face guards and whatever, all this stuff. Then they say you have to have the test. And you have to show a negative test or be positive for some time. 
This is that stupidity that comes back in. Oh, and pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic is not good enough. Healthy is not good enough. You're a violation of the order because you're healthy. But less, when you go to the CDC COVID-19 in your health website talking about their test, the first thing you read is not everyone needs to be tested. And if by now you start to understand the dynamic of the stupidity behind playing one side against the other, principles that don't fulfill threats that can't even, cannot be fulfilled, the mitigation, the, the term and hesitation of to the extent of certain provisions, this is what I was telling you now. You're starting maybe here that inside the, the rules that they're, the insanity they're putting on is the hesitation that disqualifies the application. Not everyone needs to be tested. So if you listen to this list instead of getting belligerent, claim it in person like I hear lots of people say, I think we're in a slightly different day. You still have to assert your rights, but you have to do them in a particular thing because it's through an administrative infra infrastructure. Your administrative procedures apply. And then you got to be careful of sometimes these directives and orders aren't rules. So you got to be careful on why you see court cases defining the distinction between all these. The main thing I know that if it goes through the administrative procedures, it's not supposed to interfere with antecedent rights before it got there without a right and the burden without a, a warrant and without and that's that warrant that they have to that's on them not you to produce and so i'm going backwards so all you constitutionalists i'm actually enforcing the constitution that way i'm just not talking about i have rights you have to go back through the pathways that are there preserved for us i, I don't like it but that's what that's what i learned i've started to do with the mining stuff the mining property and the grants and all that it started cleaning stuff up really fast. COVID and you're out. Not everyone needs to be tested, even though the report says everyone needs to be tested. People who have symptoms of COVID-19 have to be tested, but not everyone has to be tested. People who have had close contact within six feet of an infected person for a cumulative total of 15 minutes or more or over a 24-hour period with someone with confirmed COVID-19. That's just symptoms now. So understand the power you're now being given by those. If you understand what to state, each one of these statements, I'm not one with COVID. Here's my letter that says I don't have my name on any medical report. People who have a close contact, I don't know if anybody's been, well, I've been within six feet. Isn't the rule six feet? Everyone should be staying away from me. I don't sit around for 15 minutes. People who, next one, people who have taken part in activities that put them at higher risk of COVID-19 because they cannot socially distance as needed, as needed, such as travel, attending large social gatherings, and being a crowded indoor sex setting. So here you have a first out, I've not been traveling if I get an airplane. You'd have to say that. Now, they're going to force you anyway, but actually they won't. The government won't. It'll be that third-party carrier that won't let you board. And this is why you have to be ahead of all this. Anyway, you should have your short sheet, your, your sheet with these these points that you are not one that has to be tested, and you are showing how. Not that oh, I have a right to be independent. I have medical things. The testing has nothing to do with any of that. If you have missed that point, last one: people who have been asked or referred to get testing by their health care provider, local or state health department. Wow, that's the last one. It's the most important one. Where do they get that? Why would you be asked or referred to get testing from a local health care provider if it has to do with your doctor? It is about your doctor, and it is about what they're doing to initiate the first report back to the government of something that's on the list that is then taken by the government not to control you first, but to go determine that you are not just a mere symptom, but the carrier of that infectious agent, that you are the infected person. That last one is critical. Why I've been saying it, it comes, I mean, this is how many months, almost a year now. I told you your letter from the local health official that says that there's no reports. And now I'm saying get your name, make sure that there's no report uh, that your name is on, medical report, with your name answers this uh, thing that says, you know, not everyone needs to be tested when you show you're not of any of the class of people that are subject. And this becomes paramount against the state as well as you heard the state acknowledge. Now, a lot of gyration here, it's not because I'm inventing it, it's because that's what they've done and what I've been telling, explaining to you how you were going to address it. That if you've been paying attention all these times, you would have been building your dossier on this and you would be 
taking out the summary statement points that you're making your travel papers with. Now, none of you did that, I don't think. Some of you might have. But uh, I don't know many people that have compiled the type of information I've been saying in order to be able to do that you know, tonight. Understand, you go to get these documents, say, oh, here's the list. Put that in the thing. Okay, the, the CDC says, I don't, someone who doesn't have to be tested, I don't know that I qualify at any one of those. And here's my letter that I'm not even uh, locally recognized as someone with an infectious disease. Never been asked. You don't tell them you don't have a health care provider. doesn't matter. You're dealing with the official record anyway. That assumes that you, a health care provider had to file it, right? So you play that part. Not playing it, you're actually just using the silence in the system. A CDC orders air travel to unmask for government surveillance. So they force you to wear the mask until they want to surveil you. And this shows you, again, this, this duality in the system, the stupidity of what goes on. If, if you don't see right here, they'll do everything to control you, give you the stick that you're going to go munch that carrot, and when, it ne when they need some more service, they'll exempt you. They said there was no exemptions, folks. What happened? The state said there was no exemptions. This is an exemption. CDC orders travelers to unmask. This is an, even, this is an old report. I'm finally getting to it. Putting government, putting government surveillance and controls of travelers ahead of what is supposed to be their mission of protecting the public and against infectious disease, the U.S. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have, has ordered that effectively today all air travelers must risk their lives by removing their face mask on demand of, of the Tran Transportation Security Administration checkpoint staff or airline ticketing and gate agent. Won't get into the deepness of all this. The point is, as you see, it always works in the government's favor, and there's no rationale behind it whatsoever. Because the point here is that I would say, I don't believe, as I said, I've said this said it re repeatedly, I don't think COVID's a thing more than made up. The, uh, the cancer treatment that they're providing, that they call a vaccine, the synthetic pathogen bioweapon, the experimental cancer treatment, the synthesized gene cancer treatment, is all modeled in computers. None of it's real. Now, the treatment might be real, but they're going to actually deal with you through the pandemic excuse to get the injection. But there's no actual infectious disease here anyway. So part of this is an interesting problem. You wouldn't have the mask anyway for, for them to do it. And I think the government's telling you that. But in this case, the mission to protect the public against infectious disease is exactly what I've been telling you. You confirm that for you, there is no local report that there is an infectious disease in you because there's no medical report which starts the process locally. Is what I've been telling you for, what would be next month? It'll be a year, another 15 days or so. It'll be a year. And so we're seeing if it took a year for me to be able to finally get to the documentation that the government admits to you, for you to use, well, here we are. It doesn't change anything I've said, and it's not changing anything said. It did change. Now I want to, you're going to have to send a, a letter with your name on it because it's now they're now enforcing the the requirement to not have equal access like everybody else, and now you have to negotiate your access. And the the thing about the test, you don't think that's a that's a state mask thing? Well, the test, the CDC's test, that is a test thing, but there is no test if you qualify, and you have to qualify it. And you qualify it by the local determination letter that says you they have no medical report with your name or and I'm asking you to go further, there is no medical report for anybody. And we've had to add another addendum on that that you can do it you can uh, what do they call that redact the name. you can redact the doctor. I just want to see that the report was issued for this matter on someone. And we've never been able to get anybody to produce that evidence. But anyway, so get the one for you. Get the one for you. And then now you're being treated under quarantine without jurisdiction, aren't you? This really was so simple the whole time. I don't know where the world went here, but at any rate. Now, so we move into the CDC. Well, you can't wear, you have to wear masks. This, that. Oh, well, until we need to see you, until we need to identify you, until you need to do something you need to do. And we're going to interfere with that. As long as we get to know, you get to go. You get to munch the carrot, you give us your face. You don't. Then we throw you back out, and we'll use the stick to do that. No scientific evidence that masks do anything. Sweden banning masks. Amazing the, the story in, in, in Sweden over this whole thing. Ups and downs about it. But uh, what is really amazing is how far we as societies are allowing politicians who have no qualifications in medicine to roll out draconian uh, decrees. I'm reading from Armstrong Economics. 
I appreciated his uh, his tact on this, his um, his statement on this. So I'm going to read a little bit of it here, just a little bit. Uh, you can get the download link. I just want to set this up a bit. Again, I, I'm a, I'm dismayed uh, how we have allowed this politicians with no medical uh, authority, and even the medical uh, supposed experts are not medical authorities. They are just brokers of harma, uh, silent p. These measures are really intent on dividing the people to prevent civil unrest because the socialistic system is collapsing and they needed an excuse to throw an economic restraints out the window. All that's true, except you see, you're already in a socialistic system and I've told you it's going to get worse than that. It's going way past communism. Right? It's way past whatever what Marxism, all that stuff. I have shown before this writer, Armstrong, Econo economics, and before I purchased a box of masks from Amazon and on, and it clearly states it will not prevent the disease. Maybe you have a picture of that in your folder. So obviously, if you get a corona, that's just a common cold, and wore even two masks to bed at night, and a condom, and this is to your point, Grimner, in the chat, the plastic saran wrap around that, uh, you, uh, in case you might get AIDS, the symptoms of COVID, folks, AIDS, uh, while sleeping alone, you will have, have no legal case to sue the mask manufacturer for a faulty product. It, uh, okay, so it goes on to Fauci and on and on and on. And where am I, the dismay is uh, over what, how did Sweden do it? Officials at Homestead Municipality, Sweden recently forced a teacher to remove their mask and prohibited the use of masks in all forms of PPE in schools. The municipality said there was no scientific evidence for wearing masks, citing the Swedish Public Health Agency. There's your local control by local officials doing local stuff. Now, what you have to show locally for you is that this, you won't get it in the United States, all, all the counties are bribed. But anyway, you, you go ahead and try. You show that there's no local determination for you over this, and likely there's none over the official you're talking to, that maybe they should send their question, where's the medical report for you? And you're going to slowly build your, your proof that there's no need to wear a mask, not because they don't work, but because there's no actual infectious agent located that the law required. And in Oregon, as I went back and through, I noticed you can't even sue the local official because all the authority now has been brought into the governor, which is very fascinating. Very fascinating. It's like, that's the empress there. So, this no scientific evidence of mask work, so a county, if you will, in Sweden says, well, we have nothing to enforce. Stop wearing that mask. We find evidence they actually do harm. You may be placed on a UK on US may be placed on UK's COVID-19 quarantine red list as the endless diseases furl out. Now we're going to hear the scare to scare tactics about how this thing is mutating. Well, we predicted all this at least behind the woodshed. I'm sure other people have said it well as well. I only know what I say. I said, well, if you're dealing with the common cold and the seasonal flu, and I just saw Gigi's boo in the chat room a little bit ago. I saw the name go through. How you doing? And you should be able to tell me if I'm right or wrong. I've been waiting for you to feed back to me and tell me if I'm right or wrong. These things mutate, don't they, Gigi's Boo? And they've been telling us they couldn't cure the common cold for it. But today they're trying to tell us that they can. And because of this threat now, the UK, is going, of all places, is going to put the USC maybe on a red list. As the story gets built up about how you're not going to be able to go much anywhere anyway. The Britain's quarantine red list is set to be expanded and may include the United States and Spain and may a move that will essentially ban all American and ci Spanish citizens from entering Britain. Well, they're right to do so, but on a fraud, makes no sense, but it's not about making sense. It's about making lots of bucks, actually. Caught on camera, for those of you that are uh, thinking this is uh, not might happen or, or for you and unexpectedly, caught on camera. And why I'm trying to tell you, you got to go a different way on this. And I'm not blaming this woman at all. It came on her too quick, I'm sure. But uh, they get you in a vulnerable point if, and in a, without an expectation. I want you to have an expectation. Woman dragged out of Chattanooga bar for not wearing a mask. Has a video. Uh, pretty atrocious. Uh, woman on woman wrestling, it looked like. Uh, but uh, not so funny, actually. Uh, where uh, uh, somebody wanting to be security is dragging out a woman after a bit of an altercation over a not wearing a mask if you think this can get uh, or you think you might be able to have a say i don't know how many people come out of the woodwork anymore to come after you if they think because the government has propped them up with these placards that no one dissects that you may have a problem and so this becomes one of those things that we were talking about last week you need to find the facilities uh, risk management facilities uh, response official whoever that is hopefully it's not these security agents 
And then you have to go, again, you have to interrupt your life. You don't have the equal access of everybody else because of something that's fraudulently synthesized into, into the society that no one wants to work to throw off. I mean, no one is to the point of actually being effective or in such numbers that they're going to have to. As simple as Sweden's answer is, seems to us, we have the example now, if we didn't see it other places, that you can be attacked, you will be beat up, you'll be drugged across the floor by your hair, folks. If you didn't know that when I was telling you that we'd be, they'd had us at our throats, third-party people at each other's throats, and you don't have a cause against the government there, and they sit back and laugh at all this. That's your problem. You should have handled that better. Okay, so I've been asking you to handle it better. I'm asking you to get a little even more specifically knowledgeable about what you're up against so that you can bring your special case disability yellow bus bold folder to show you how special case yellow bus you are and that it, because of that, their, their exemptions that don't exist are an accommodation to you. And you just give them the simple answer. Because the, you believe the vast works and I don't have, I'm not a direct threat. And the best thing to do is keep six feet away from me. I'd just like to do business with you, pursue it to the law, and leave. And we'll be all hemp, we'll be friends again. And so we have to work harder uh, as well. We're disabled in now in our friendships uh, in this whole thing. And I don't understand why people aren't offended, I mean, really insulted in this. I, I guess I get that way, and I've got to be careful about thinking too deep. Anyway, keep moving on the surface. We try to just give ourselves log logistically the point understanding it's real it's real that you're going to be attacked by people who believe they have the right and this is not unknown to us but this is now every one of us if you didn't think you were an enemy combatant now nah, you are in covid people would you can't even be healthy folks you're a violator people with learning disabilities told that they would not be resuscitated if they became ill with covid 19 says leading charity so you have you have the symptoms of AIDS, you have a dry cough, and if you have a learning disability because you just told them you have a mental incapacity, one of your ADA disabilities, if you have a trouble, they will not resuscitate you. If you can't see the writing on the wall of how they're going to call the society here, uh, I, I don't know, folks. It's right here in the news what we're being told. What, do I read? Do I even have to read this? I guess a little bit. Who, Gavin Howcroft, 30, 30 years old, 30 years old, folks, who was a, has a learning disability, global development delay, receives COVID-19 vaccine from senior immunization nurse uh, in, a, in a picture that shows that he's already getting this thing. Now, people with learning disabilities are being given not do not resuscitate DNR orders in England. You get the vaccine you're, and you have a disability they know about, a mental disability, you're going to be one of these people, folks. And how do you know that happens to you, especially when it causes this mental disability? You better listen to the insidiousness of this, of this condition. Charity Mencap told The Guardian that uh, many would were told they would not resuscitate if they got COVID-19. This is symptoms that a faulty diagnostic tool is used to determine your life and death, folks, in the hands of these people. It's supposed to be medical profession, professionals. People with learning disabilities are still being given do not resuscitate orders. Still, folks, it's been going on. If you don't look at this and say, this is the call feature of this whole thing. This is the eugenics feature that has been planned into the system. They're already doing this to those that are lesser amongst us. There's a fury kickback at the do not resuscitate notices given the COVID patients with learning disabilities. So fine, we get some people kicking back. The point is it's on you. It's already not too late to stop it, but it's why, where was the furor, the fury before this got to here? What did you think these people were doing with this technology? New COVID-19 strain pops up in Finland, may be difficult to detect. You see a theme this last week or week before, new mutations. Well, of course, it's the common cold and it's the flu. And remember, they said that they can choose wrong your flu influenza shot every year because they just don't know. It, it mutates. By the time they get the the, the vaccine, the real well, the vaccine, not, not the synthetic genetic manipulator, the vaccine done, it could go on and mutate to something else that year. This has already been known. It's like all this has been gone down. No one understands. But Finland's saying, oh, here's a threat. There's a threat. It's mutating. Oh, watch out. Here it comes. You asked. You got more. In fact, you have more mutations than everybody else. Do they, folks? Do you think they have tests for that? They can't find SARS-CoV-2. You think they have tests for this, actually? Uh, okay, we can believe all that fairy tale. 
And then the Finns come out with a nasal vaccine meant to stop coronavirus completely to start human tests in this uh, test this summer. If the Finns don't step up and talk about how corrupt their government is to threaten them all and then turn around and say they have a some vaccine, some nasal vaccine, oh, we're going to not inject it now, that stops the common cold, you folks in, in, in oh, oh, really, everywhere need to get your head out from wherever it is because it's not where it needs to be. The perks of a needle-free finished vaccine. They just said it's mutating. We all understand you can't stop the common cold and that the same government that threatens everybody claims to have a, va a nasal vaccine just because you won't get poked. Yeah, well, there's going to be a bigger boot going somewhere here soon. COVID-19 variants outpace Europe's slow vaccine rollout. So they're admitting the vaccine, so-called vaccine, this synthetic cancer experimental treatment for AIDS symptoms, is outpacing what they can do. Well, they're looking at the common cold or seasonal flu, folks. But, so it, it makes sense, right? But no, they're going to get big, big scare tactic out of all this stuff. COVID variants, mutants, outpace Europe's slow vaccine. You're not safe, folks. There's nothing going to make you safe. Well, if you listen to them. And so this is a terrorism. And until people start stepping up and not just protesting, but actually start going after this, few people are. I shouldn't say nobody. I don't, I don't really mean it that way. But in mass, they're not, we're not doing it. We're, we're at each other's throats, and we keep letting these criminals tell us certain things. They actually promote there's a threat and then tell you the next week that they have the answer for it. I don't know why people don't see this. Talk about cancel culture. They're canceling your societies. They're canceling your way of life. In fact, uh, someone sent me a, 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 a thing, a judge, cancel culture. The women, children, and indigenous, if the Indian tribes think that they're protected, they don't understand. I've been talking about this since Dapple. Right? They're the stalking horse. Judge blocks sale of National Archives in Seattle. I won't tell you a big old long story more than to say there was a piece of property with the National Archives in Seattle that got sold. And it took the Indian tribes to sue to stop it, to save the archive, which they said was all the evidence of their history. And I looked at this and said, well, this is the cancel culture working right as Biden gets in place. They get rid of the evidence, the historical black and white you need to rely on. that gives you the, the foundation. Otherwise, there is none. And they keep going along in the duality of discussion to slowly pull you away from what was real. And after a few generations, you've lost it. Here is direct evidence. A judge, uh, okay, let's not argue this one, for, granted a preliminary injunction that the archives of the United National Archives but were going to be sold into private hands, had information from people that require the record to be preserved that allows them to prove their existence. Is the type of cancer culture we're talking about when you see statues torn down, you see archives de destroyed, you see any other things changed. The Mandalay effect, the Mandela fraud effect, that we cha allow it to be changed in real time is quite, quite astonishing to watch. In this one case, maybe people don't see it that way. Well, I, cert I certainly do. And I hope you can appreciate the insight inside of that. In fact, so much is the cancel culture that not even the news, the news people in New York Times, i got a story to give you a link to a video, they don't even feel safe about talking out. That's supposedly your news, which actually might be a good thing, but you realize it's the least common denominator that actually gets out to cancel your life, your culture. I need you to think about that and respond to it. Remember, thank you for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Thank you to all the donators that are going on this month for keeping the what the network running, and everybody that's syndicating. Thank you for all that, and uh, thank you for what you do to pass the spread the word, because it doesn't get out otherwise. And thank you to Slow Burn Six Seventy Eight for doing that last week. I appreciate your help. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
But that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 